What is the final theorem? The final theorem is that that algebra is isomorphic to the convolution algebra coming from the Hilbert scheme. Just, just, uh, just like it, just I mean, uh, so here you define some kind of uh, whole algebra I mean, using the semi-stable yes, yes. thing. When we hear them and see them at the chalkboards oh. having these discussions, and it's like another language, even if they're speaking English, we don't understand the word they're saying. That it is uh, isomorphic to the convolution algebra of but that, of no, that, of this. Of this. this is a module of that. Talking to people here, I sometimes get a sense of a vast and unreachable universe of numbers and connections that they relish exploring and find totally absorbing. We do virtually everything for them. When they lock themselves out repeatedly at weekends, can't figure out how washing machines work, how the television works, how anything works like that. They get locked out of this building. They can't even find a stapler in their office on occasion. Do you think there's a relationship between how clever and how abstract the maths is and how bad they are at getting the key into a door, tying the shoelaces? It, it varies, yes. Well, from my experience, let's say, if they deal with more um, of the practical applied side sort of maths, if it has a, a you know sort of biological... Um, link or in the computer science field or engineering or something like that they do tend to have a more practical mind as well as a mathematical mind but if they're what's known as pure mathematicians they sometimes struggle to deal with day-to-day -day life i found my name is Reinhard uh, Crispo and i'm one of the organizers of the program on discrete integrable systems here at the Newton Institute my name is Frank Neuf. I'm also one of the organizers of the same program on discrete integrable systems. One of the striking differences between yourselves visually and the, the members of uh, the Algebraic Lee theory team is that you're much more casually dressed. Now, is this a difference between pure and the slightly more applied mathematics, do you think? Uh, well, if I can speak for myself, I thought this would be on radio, so I didn't need to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main reason. Because <laughs> there is that uh, joke or uh, perception outside that uh, mathematicians are working in this particular uh, field do not have the social skills or the desire to be socially interactive with other people. They, they are obsessed with numeric theory. Well, uh, there are people, uh, there are mathematicians like that, but I wouldn't say uh, that we're all like that. Uh. Obviously not. I mean, you're <laughs> looking at two, you could pass for normal human beings <laughs> quite easily. <laughs> Is there a, a code of behaviour within this particular maths tribe here? I would say no, really. The, the mathematical mind is a bit of a, of a maverick in, in, in any respect. So we get the whole array of plumage of people that come here together and, and that adds to the, the joy actually and the variety. I think one of the interesting things about mathematics is that you have quite different personalities uh, from people in three-piece suits to people with uh, long hair and without shoes and uh, the accompanying lifestyle but then the nice thing is and I found this not just in this institute but this is true also in the University of Cambridge more generally and also to some extent in other universities that this personality or this lifestyle doesn't matter, but you have this joint interest in, in mathematics. Uh, so that, that sort of does transcend the social barriers, if you like. Part of the thing we do here is we do encourage them to mix socially. We actually give them a budget here, small budget each programme has, to do things socially. You know, we encourage them to go punting and arrange it for them if necessary. We encourage them to go walking around the colleges, have wine receptions, tea parties. We send Take them, them out of themselves. Uh, kind of. yes, yeah, learn to relax a bit. So we, we do try and encourage them to do it. Some groups it's easier than others. Uh, and what do mathematicians do for fun, if you're thinking about maths 24 hours a day, in your own cases? Fun? <laughs> well, I always like to, to think <laughs> that, OK, I am a professional mathematician, but I was lucky enough to have my hobby as a profession. Or maybe walking or little pastimes where you deliberately try to do something to get your brain off of your research mathematics. Maybe this image that you are really switched on 24 hours, seven days a week is a bit too uh, exaggerated. We do take holidays, we do <laughs> have weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
But it is true, if you are in a completely different environment or you are on holidays, maybe every now and then some things are working somewhere in the back of your mind. Well, often you see mathematicians walking around with pens and they're kind of obsessed about that. So there's always, I wouldn't go out anywhere without pens or at least a little piece of paper. It is the power and mystery of mathematics that unites and drives this international tribe of science beyond the rather mundane social and cultural niceties that the rest of us are bound by. They are waving, not drowning by numbers. Now you poo-pooed the idea of that bell earlier being a call to mathematical prayer <laughs> of some kind, but it sounds like you're talking about this special place that people yeah. come to and it's open and contemplative and, and, you, and yeah. you share. I mean, it does have an air of somewhere that is apart well, from the hurly-burly of real life. Well, it's apart from uh, a lot of hurly-burly, although it does get quite noisy. I mean, we, we don't have a workshop going on. When we have a workshop, I mean, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll have 150 people around in here and it ain't contemplative then. <laughs> it's a great melee. I've been here from the beginning of the program in January and time goes so very fast. It's like uh, a little bit like when you congregate monks in one place and... Like a monastery? Yeah, like a monastery basically and uh, uh, for, a, for a little while of course with a finite, <laughs> finite duration but uh, you lose a bit sense of time actually when you're, you're here. The Tribes of Science was presented by Peter Curran. The producer was Anna Buckley.